Early Childhood Development is a comprehensive approach to programs and policies for children from birth to seven years of age. Its purpose is to protect the rights of children to develop their full cognitive, emotional, social and physical potential. Bahai Tudumelan, good evening. My name is Tabo Molokwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we explore early childhood development and the ways in which we can ensure that children are getting sufficient knowledge at an early age for their maximum development. Now joining us in studio to have this conversation is uh, Dr. Janelli Gotze, who is the Acting Director of Early Childhood Development at the Department of Basic Education. Mbali Mavunda, the author of K53 for Kids, and Teresa Michael, the CEO of Africa Tekken Bambanani. They will be joining us just a bit later on on the show. Now we kick off the conversation with the Department of Basic Education just to get a better understanding of what early childhood development is and what it entails. Dr. Gotts is joining us now. Good evening, Doc. Uh, welcome to the show. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Much appreciated. Doc, I'm very much interested, you know, in finding out what early childhood development is and what does it entail? Because, you know, sometimes when you talk about uh, ECD, uh, somewhere, somehow it gets, uh, you know, the translation just uh, gets lost uh, along the way. Yes, and I think your emphasis on the word early is, is really important because um, early childhood development starts from conception um, all the way through to school going age. Um, it is holistic. I think we often think ECD and we think ECD centre or, or preschool, um, but it's much broader than that. We've got um, that very, very important first thousand days from conception to two years old, which is all about um, the mother's health, the, the baby's health, getting early nutrition, early brain development sorted. Um, and then from the age three to five years old, early stimulation, language and cognitive development is really important um, as we prepare children to, to enter formal schooling. Mm. Um, why it is so crucial, you know, to focus on developing children from birth until seven years old holistically? So, so all brain development already happens in, in that first couple of, of weeks of conception um, where the neurons of your brain is being developed. Um, so already a person's potential is, is established by having a mother that, that had proper nutrition and proper um, supplements. Um, and then as a child starts um, growing up, we know that this, this time period between zero and, and five years old is, is a very opportune time where the brain is still malleable. And, and that's the, the time where the most of your neurons are being connected and, and most of these pathways are being connected. So, so children are basically, from a physiological perspective, are, are given the opportunity to learn. Um, and then there's all these soft skills that come in, like working memory and, and children being able to, to sit still and listen and, and learn and um, we're setting up children to be able to learn later in life. And, and if we miss the time period, um, then we will always have to play catch up in the later years. And everything we'll do in schooling later on is missing or catching up for what we missed out on in these very, very critical years. Mm. I mean, you highlighted something saying uh, earlier on that, uh, you know, uh, it goes down there. Uh, but uh, one would ask that, uh, does early childhood development require a specialist or a teacher? Or is it something that, uh, you know, can be kick-started within the family structure? And also, what tools, you know, would they need to get going from that early age? Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, in the in ECD policy, in our curriculum, we, we say that parents and caregivers are the first point of response. They are the, the primary caregivers for these children and primary, primarily responsible for, for early stimulation. As government, we realize, um, as, as government and civil society, we need to come alongside families and say, how do we um, support them? How do we provide them with the information regarding early stimulation, what they can do, what games they can do, the reading that they can do with their kids, but also the importance of early nutrition, the nutritional needs of children, and, and the importance of nurturing care, creating a safe space so that the brain can, it doesn't need to be in that fight and flight mode forever, but it can actually start developing in the areas where, where other, other functions sit. sits. Mm. Just before I let you go, uh, Doc, I mean, early childhood development used to be looked after by the Department of Social Development, and we've seen the transition uh, from going to the Department of Basic Education. How is ECD being adopted now and, uh, you know, developed under the Department of Basic Education? And how 
you know, are they going to ensure that uh, they ca take care of it in the same way that, uh, uh, you know, they're taking care of primary and secondary education? Because we're seeing that, uh, you know, uh, the um, in layman terms, we call them crashes, you know, uh, they're still there, but uh, we've seen a lot of people moving their kids to a more established uh, system, which is there at primary schools, where you find the great R's and the, you know, uh, the great RR's, mm -hmm. if I may put it that way. How uh, are we going to make sure that uh, they are catered for the same as uh, the ones that, uh, you know, that are doing other grades within the primary level and secondary level, they get the same uh, treatment from the department? No, absolutely. A lot of the work we've been doing over the last year is thinking through our service delivery model. How can we ensure universal access to early childhood development services, um, recognizing the informality of the sector currently and, and the structure and systems that's required. So, so for zero to two-year-old children, um, we know some of them are in ECD centers and they will remain in ECD centers, but we know that there's a lot of them that doesn't access any early stimulation or early learning opportunities. And, and we're conceptualizing what could parental support and parenting programs look like, not forcing these children to go to ECD programs, but saying, how can we as government support families and parents better in terms of the role they play? And then for three to five-year-olds, we know it's more developmentally appropriate for them to be in group learning settings. So again, they're thinking through how can we support ECD centers better? How can we have various different modalities, knowing that, that communities have different needs in different areas, um, thinking through play groups, toy libraries, mobile programs, again, with this whole purpose of how can we ensure that all children in South Africa can access opportunities to early learning? Um, so a lot of work is happening behind the scenes to develop it. Dr. Janelli Kotze, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Tavi. That was uh, Dr. Janelli Kotze, who is the Acting Director of Early Childhood Development at the uh, Department of Basic Education, just helping us unpack the importance of early childhood development. I want us to take a quick breather on the other side. We continue the conversation on early childhood development. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Before the ad break, we spoke to Dr. Janelli Kotze from the Department of Basic Education just to get a clearer picture of what is meant by early childhood development. Now let us shift gears and take a look at a unique approach to early childhood development. Now joining us in studio now is author of the book titled K53 for Kids. That's Mbali Mavunga. Uh, to speak more on how we can help children early on, you know, in order for them to thrive later. She's joining us in studio uh, this evening. Bali, thanks very much for taking the time. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's a much pleasure. Much appreciated. I'm very excited about this because, you know, when you talk K53, someone would think that, you know, I'm taking out uh, a Lennis license and stuff. Yes. <laughs> but maybe let's talk about the K53 Kids uh, book, you know. Yeah. How did it come about? Um, yes, um, so I'm a, I'm a journalist uh, by qualification, um, but I didn't exactly land into the journalism space after graduating. I found mm. myself working as a receptionist at a car service shop, and my employer at the time um, actually had like um, community projects that he was busy with, and one of those projects was helping um, high school kids obtain their driver's licenses. I mean, it's a car workshop, it's mm. in the industry. But he was having a problem because he didn't have enough time on his hands and the kids were failing. So he made me in charge of the program, um, which is also now me a time that I used to actually take my driver's license. And as a graduate, I failed twice. <laughs> um, the K53 itself is an intricate book. Uh, when Through conversation with his matriculants, I found out that they also found the book to be very complicated. It wasn't easy to understand. So the writer in me then came up with this idea to simplify um, the K53 and then maybe um, think that if I introduce it to them at a younger level, then they can grow into it. I mean, you know, very interesting that you're saying that, look, if you uh, introduce it uh, at an early age, obviously, yeah. you know, they will grow with it. We yes. are experiencing quite a lot as a country. We see people crossing the roads as they please, jaywalking, that's how they call it. Uh, you know, there are yes. pedestrian lines, yes. the traffic <laughs> lights there, but people would just cross 
uh, just uh, you know in the yeah. middle of the road how important is it to make sure that uh, these young people you yeah. know get to understand that look yeah. this is where you're supposed to go yes. these are the signs and then this is what yes. to look for the fact that these signs exist and um, the young kids or regular people don't have this information until they you know until they're taking their driver's licenses means it's a problem it's not part of you know of any curriculum it's they're not teaching it in schools so if these signs exist and they're out there I won't know about them until I pick up the K53 and you're not allowed by law in South Africa you're not allowed to drive until um, um, before you are 18 years yeah. old so should we wait until we're 18 until we know what this roadside means until we know where to actually cross the road um, it's difficult because this information is there the road signs are there but the the, the learning doesn't happen until much later in um, in life mm. Um, what insights yeah. have you gained, you know, yeah. while writing and researching yeah. this book? I mean, obviously, there's quite a lot, uh, you know, that we know in terms of statistics in yes. the country yes. of road accidents and stuff. Yeah. What have you gained, you yeah. know, um, um, in during your research when you came up with the K53 Kids uh, book? Um, the first thing that I, um, the first insights that I um, I got was actually from Arrive Alive the fact that children in South Africa die more on the roads than anywhere else. Um, it broke my heart, which is why the focus had to be on them first, you know, primary school kids. Um, and also that <laughs> South Africa has one of the worst roads in the world in terms of like drivers. Mm. Um, our drivers are not equipped enough. We've got um, we've got many um, cars on the roads, but um, the registered licenses do not match that. So how are these people driving actually? Um, and I think um, this will help curb um, those accidents on the road because people can get a license anyway, just mm. about anywhere. And government has struggled for a very long time to fight the corruption when it comes to the acquisition of driver's licenses. Um, and if they invest in a project like this, uh, making sure that everyone who comes out of a school is actually equipped, they know the road signs, they know the rules. That means our roads will be much safer. So in terms, in terms of uh, making the roads safer and, and in terms of working hand in hand with government to, in, in, in making the country safer, we can work together. I mean, you're highlighting a very important aspect. They're saying that, uh, you know, uh, many people don't know that actually South Africa has more cars than any other place <laughs> in the continent. <laughs> but um, less qualifying you know, drivers. <laughs> yeah, but, but less qualifying <laughs> drivers there. Uh, but, uh, you know, as far as you're concerned, what more? Uh, needs to be done in terms of not only having children, you know, gain yeah. more knowledge at an early age, yeah. but, um, you know, to equip their parents and guardians. Uh, yes. We spoke of camera, you know, saying that uh, at schools we used to have uh, scholar patrols and stuff, yes. but we no longer see them, particularly yeah. in townships. You know, there's less schools that have also an adopter cop uh, who will be able to assist mm. also. Uh, mm. But we, I think these things are fading as time goes yeah. on. What more needs to be done to make sure that uh, these kids understand this, understand that this uh, road sign that has a brown color means this, the one that has the green color means this, yes. this is danger and then this is not. Make it a practical lesson. Um, my wish is that this book be integrated into the school curriculum. Um, that way we know that every, every school leaver has the information. Um, and also parents can bite for their kids to actually teach them at home. I live in Johannesburg and kids here drive even before they're 16 years old. And also um, it helps, you know, sometimes these single parents, these parents who live with their kids, um, in terms of them, just kids knowing where the emergency handbrake is, is very important. And also kids get lost a lot. Knowing and understanding the road signs, knowing where the road signs are can help them find their way back home um, as well. So let's amplify the message, let's amplify the education. The education is the most important part of it. Just a quick one, where can people get this book? Uh, the book is available on our e-commerce platform, it's called Paystack. Um, so you go um, paystack forward slash kids on the road. We're also available on Facebook um, as kids on the road. We also have a WhatsApp button on our Facebook. Um, can, can I share the number? You can share the number. <laughs> uh, on, you can find us on WhatsApp as well on 7 
Bali Mavunda, I wish we had more time, but thank you very so much <laughs> for making the time. Very interesting discussion we have. Uh, I think that we're going to have you soon back on the show. Much appreciated thank, for thank coming. Thank you so much. Just one last thing. Um, outside of primary schools, um, this book can, can also be used as a reference for high schoolers and also abbot schools as well. It's simplified enough um, for, for people in abbot schools to start learning here before they jump into the actual K-53. Much appreciated, Mbali. That's Mbali Mavunda, an author for K53, a book for kids. They're just sharing an insight on the importance of it and getting young people to learn more about uh, the signs. Uh, let's park it there for a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Molokwani. We are wrapping up the conversation on early childhood development. Now we are joined via Zoom. That's uh, Teresa Michael, who is the CEO of Africa Tikkun um, Bambanani, uh, which is the company that advocates for early childhood development. She's joining us uh, in studio via Zoom there. Uh, Teresa, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us this evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very happy to be here. Much appreciated. Uh, first, uh, tell us about uh, you know uh, Africa Tikun Bambanani and what exactly is it uh, that you do? I mean, uh, you know, people would ask themselves, what are they? Are they advocating for something else, or what is it? Maybe just take us through that. Sure, yeah, Tabo. So, um, what brought us to Africa Tung? Africa to Kunbambanani um, is the disparity in early childhood education across South Africa. So there are underprivileged areas of South Africa where the children do not get uh, equal education. Um, it's simply a drop-off center where children go to eat, sleep and play. And they don't get the grounding and the building blocks that will then give them the solid foundation for the rest of their schooling and um, they're not ready for school uh, you know grade one has a very high failure rate so we've gone in over the last three years we are in a rural township and underprivileged areas of south africa we have 200 ecd centers there's about 12,000 children that we work with and we have also upskilled about 1200 practitioners so what we've done is we've created a curriculum which aligns with the Department of Education framework. It has IEB content, that is the Independent Education Board of South Africa. So where there were gaps in the curriculum, we filled it with that. Um, and then recently we sent our curriculum to Finland because we all know that Finland is one of the best in the world for early childhood development. And we sent the curriculum for them to review. They have now certified it. They have helped us to fill in content where they feel that we could have improved. And it's now the only curriculum in South Africa that aligns with the Department of Education. Um, it is bulked up with the uh, Independent Board of South Africa, and it's also internationally certified. So we have seen the most wonderful results from it. Um, on our online assessment center, we have actually seen children go from literally not actually um, achieving or not developing to be developed, well-rounded children all ready for their schooling. Mm. Um, so uh, it's, mm. it's just been very, very exciting. Well, Teresa, I, I'm very much interested now in understanding what the Triple Four campaign for early childhood development, you know, came about and what does it entail? And also, I mean, do you think that uh, there is enough information out there, uh, you know, on early childhood development? And also, how can we go about increasing people's knowledge on its importance? Yes, so the Triple Four campaign, Triple Four stands for for change for impact in 2024 and how are we going to change and impact 2024 we are going to try and get to as many children as we possibly can to give them this quality education and triple four stands for 444 rand that's all it costs 444 rand for the whole year to put one child through our program. Mm. 
And we are going to the public, we are going to communities, we are going to corporates, and we are saying, please take a child, put a child through school. You simply go onto our website, you scan our QR code, and for 444 Rand, you can make the difference. You can ensure that that child, um, a child between the age of three to six years old, will be able to receive quality education in ECD so that they are prepared for the rest of their schooling. Um, and your second question um, about is there enough knowledge out there? People have done studies and most people are aware of the importance of ECD. Because, um, as I said before, this is the building blocks. You know, a child's brain um, is about 65% developed by the time they get to the age of six years old. And this is where they learn everything. They're like sponges. And if you miss out on the stage, then you've missed out. It's very hard to fill in that gap. Um, and unfortunately, in some areas, parents are not well um, versed on the importance of of ECD. It's still seen as a place where you drop off children just to be cared for. Um, and slowly but surely, we are educating parents on the importance of ECD. Yes, children must play. They have to go outside, play in the sand, climb trees, um, you know, breathe in the fresh air. That is first and foremost. ECD is play-based and they also learn that way. But at the same time, we need to teach them the structure of literacy and numeracy as well. Teresa, um, just in brief before I let you go, because we are running and, out of um, time, um, I, I want us to look at how do you think that government can be more involved in awareness around early childhood uh, development and ensure more children from various socioeconomic backgrounds get the education that will help them thrive from an early age? Yes, so um, government um, of recent years um, are aware of the importance and they are trying to make communities um, aware of it. Um, and how they can help is by joining NGOs, joining us in this, in this program. Therese? To firstly, educate uh, parents on the importance, but because communities need buy-in um, and and you cannot just barge into a community and impose your way onto the community they need buy-in and the government officials are really good and the district officials um, at introducing us into these um, ecd communities Teresa, thanks very much uh, for joining us uh, this evening, talking to us about uh, the project that you're running there at uh, Africa Ticket. Much appreciated for coming. Thank you. If you can just please all go onto our website, africatukumbambanani.org. That was, uh, that was uh, t the CEO of Africa Ticket. Uh, Tikun Bambanani, that's Teresa Michael, just giving us more insight on the importance of early childhood development. Just apologies there as she was breaking up, but uh, also talking about how we can ensure that uh, children get the best education possible at an early age. Thank you to my earlier guest, Dr. Janelli Kotze from the Department of Basic Education, as well as Mbali Mafunga, uh, who is an author there. That's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Just send us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. For myself, Thabo Mulkwane, and the rest of the team, Mas Chabakobola has your primetime news after this. Thank you for watching. Good night.